I'm Russ Kickle, and on this episode of American Reef, we've got part two of the Tim Plaza interview. Before we bring up part two of that Tim Plaza video, we got a couple announcements. The first one, if you've watched the show, you know that Mike Paletta has a freshwater planted tank. Well, Mike plans on tearing down that freshwater planted tank. Why, you may ask? Basically, he wants to start up a 500 gallon reef tank. So, something's gotta go. So at this point, basically, Mike is looking for a home for that freshwater planted tank. So if you're interested in a freshwater planted tank and he's looking to get rid of the whole setup, right? Um, we're talking the radion lights, the tank, the stand, the automated CO2 tank, uh, the filtration. Uh, he's still got water, fish, plants. Uh, he's got everything still, right? Um, it, you know, at this point, he's just really looking forward or looking to try to find a new home for this thing more than anything. Um, so anyway, if you're interested, uh, reach out to him on Facebook and uh, let him know you're interested and you guys can figure out, you know, something from there. Uh, the second announcement, Bulk Reef Supply has a new video series called the ULM series, Ultra Low Maintenance. Anyway, it's worth checking out. Uh, there's a lot of tips and tricks in there um, as it relates to basically cutting down maintenance on reef tanks. Um, whether it's setting them up so that you kind of start off on the right foot. Um, and even if you have a reef tank already set up, you can kind of glean some things that you may want to change on your tank that again will kind of save you time. And I'm all about saving time. So again, it's a video series worth checking out. Uh, on the third note, basically Premium Aquatics just released their video this week on the Waveline Wave Puck. Jeff did a video for him and again, I never knew this product existed. It was a cool little product that, again, it did an unboxing kind of video that I thought was very valuable as such. I'm kind of mentioning it here. Again, check it out on YouTube channel. Just search for Premium Aquatics and you'll kind of see the video out there. And then lastly, I get way too many emails on where I, can I get the uh, American Reef HPD. Again, AmericanReefHPD.com. One word, AmericanReefHPD.com. Uh, you can also just go to AmericanReef.com too. There's a link there under the store icon. Um, that being said, those are all the announcements. And uh, now it's time to pick up where we last left off, where basically Tim was talking about his Achilles Tang, which I absolutely love. So let's, uh, let's hear what Tim has to say on his Achilles Tang. <music> Really I was gonna say it looks beautiful still. Yeah. 
See, that's still my favorite fish. Yeah, and they're hard to keep. Uh, for some reason, I don't know why, but uh, a lot of people have a hard time keeping them. So my advice has been basically they need a lot of flow. Um, they really, really love the flow for some reason. I guess they come from uh, areas of the reef crest um, in Hawaii where the, just the waves are basically pounding them. So a lot of oxygen in there. Um, and I think they need to be just eating a lot too. Yeah. Just a lot of energy, uh, a lot of food and energy. Right. And then again, stress-free environment where no one's picking on them all the time. Um, I have noticed, I, I can say this, that when my nitrates, nitrates get above like 60, the fish didn't do so well. So um, I noticed that as I got my nitrates down to like a manageable 40, mm -hmm. um, the fish seemed to be doing better. Um, not so, getting so many spots or anything, or, or it just seemed to be a lot better. Yeah, what did you notice when you say they didn't you know, do well? What, what, what did well, well, when my nitrates, when my nitrates were running into 60, I mean, one time my nitrates were at 80. It's uh, sad to say that damn API kit turned blood red. Um, it was scary to see it. the nitrates are high. But um, when my nitrates were super high like that, uh, the fish seemed to pick up it. You know, they would get the white spot on them, mm -hmm. um, not to the point where they were, it was deadly or over over um, taking their entire body, but you can tell they were stressed out. Something that was not right with the, not the nitrates being up that high. And as I did the larger water changes and got it down to like 40, um, it's it's a lot better. They're, they don't see, hardly see any spots any time on them at all now. And also, they would have like um, in the higher nitrate range um, a little bit like a cloud to their eye. Yes. Yeah, a little bit yep. of cloudiness in their eyes. Um, so, you know, I haven't seen any of that over the last year. Um, so I really focus on getting my numbers down to better parameters. Well, and, and it's so funny because depending on who you talk to, if, if, if you'd mentioned 40 to them, they'd be going, 40? Oh my God! You know, because a lot of people go crazy over the, you know, trying to manage numbers as opposed yeah. to managing a tank, right? Okay. And, instead I mean, of uh, <laughs> ideally, I'd like to get them down to 15. I, it, I think over the last in this tank, I don't think I've ever been that low. Right. <laughs> it's just goes my bio though. Um, yeah, I just don't see it happening unless I try like a Kato reactor. Um, now they have those Kato reactors that. Um, it's in a tube right, where you can right. put a on there, um, and there's other methods, I guess, that I can try for the nitrate. I, I, I tried that sulfur, sulfur denitrator. Right. Um, I, I don't know. It's just, it didn't seem to work so well. So. Well, but see, again, to me, that goes back to, again, managing the tank versus managing to a number. When you look at things and they just work, why do you fight that, right? Exactly. Yeah. To me, to exactly. me, you know, it's it kind of like it works and it works. So you don't argue with that. Whereas people try to hit those numbers and who, who's to say that that's going to work as opposed to cause more issues and problems and, you right. know. Chasing, chasing the numbers, right? Right. Um, it's always been one of those things, chasing the numbers. Right. Exactly. Although, don't get me don't get me wrong. Those kind of again, those Kato reactors now. That's kind of a cool concept. I, I thought that in general, I, I I just thought that was neat. You know, whoever thought of that, I was kind of like, hey, what a good idea, right? Because you can blast it with light. Mm. You know. Something uh, something totally new and innovative, and a lot of people are building their own now, so they're doing right. it that way. I think there's a lot of potential there. Right. It doesn't seem to take a huge, super big footprint also in your your equipment room or your right. sump or whatever. You're going to keep it. Right. And, and when you look at it, the idea... If you've ever, I don't know, have you played around with, again, refugiums in general? I mean, when I say refugiums, I mean taking out a ton of nutrients with anything growing as far as, you know, whatever it's Kato right. or any kind of the macroalgae, right? No, I, I mean, I, I, the last time I used it, I think it was like 10 years ago, I, I had a custom, like, add-on to a sump uh, for a Kato reactor or a Kato chamber, mm -hmm. you know. This is, I, I thought it was kind of cool to look at, but, um, you know, with that light growing, with the light down there, it seemed like coral and algae was growing in the sump. Right. And it's like, oh, God, I like to be able to look at my sump and see the equipment right. really fast to make everything run right. Right. And so I'll get coral and algae growing down in the, in the sump because of the light lead off. Right. And uh, a Kato would actually collect stuff. It was weird. It's like, like a right. dusting. And I found myself kind of shaking it out. 
right. and then siphoning it out, um, siphoning the bottom with the residuals out. I was like, yeah. And then the little strands of that stuff, when I would shake it up, some of the strands would come loose and get stuck in the pump. Right. <laughs> the pumps and clog things. I'm right. Like, ah, it's a little too much for me. Right, right. <laughs> Well, for probably, I'll say, two years, I, I just experimented as far as how much nutrient, you know, it would take out and what was the key. And like, to me, the key to any of that was basically pruning, cutting and growing. Uh -huh. And so you always had to prune, it always had to grow and you needed lots of it to grow and you always had to prune, right? So. The more that you grew, basically the more nutrient it would pull out of the water. So it was really a huge factor of how fast you could grow and how much you could grow. And and it was funny, um, I can't remember the exact numbers that I had, but for my little 90 gallon tank, I needed at least 90 gallons, right? of kind of equivalent to kind of support a small bio load in that tank. And it was really off, it, it didn't make sense, right? It, it, you really needed a lot of green, right? And a lot of pruning for it to work. Yeah. And um, and it was funny because with the reactor, I was like, wow, so it's super growing it now, right? And in other words, it throws it in a tube and now it's, you know, it's saying, listen, you're going to grow quicker, <laughs> right? And you're going to pull it out and you're going to cut it quicker. And I'm like, so they solved the problem of needing all that space by, hey, right, right. right. And, and super saturating that water and that nutrient by shoving it through there. And I was like, wow. So there's no light lead either. You know, with these, these Kato reactors, there's no light lead. Um, it's just the only thing you have to be cognizant of uh, is cleaning it and um, being able to you know, take it apart, put it back together. Hopefully right. Science well, so it's easy to do. Exactly. Yeah, that's a great concept. It's like, oh, that is cool. It's something to be excited about. Exactly. Although again, to me that it's more maintenance. Every, once a week, you yeah. got to do it, or or else yeah. it's useless, right? Yeah, I don't know if they've ever had one that clogged up. You know, I'm guessing the flow will always go through it. But what if the Kato gets so thick? Um, I, I don't know. So no. I guess it's like a sponge; it fits kind of clog up after a while. Well, the thing about it is, it just stops. You know, it stops taking pulling nutrient out of the water because it doesn't grow, so it's useless. Right, yeah. so you know, I mean, you may get flow through it, but it's not growing. So the fact that it's right. not growing means it's not pulling any nutrient out. So what good is it? What's the value? Yeah. Right. So it's almost like keep it running at like fifty percent capacity. Maybe that's a magic number. I don't know what the capacity number is for something like that, but maybe fifty to seventy-five percent. Uh, I watch it. Always have that. Yeah, well, to me, it would be like, I would say 30. In other words, I'd, I'd keep everything cut at 30, you know, it. cut at 30 once a week, boom, and let it go, all right? Yeah. And, did you did a pretty big, uh, uh, I'm guessing you were using it for more uh, nitrate control? Or exactly. Nitrates. Yeah. Yep, exactly. And and for me, it was surface area, right? So it, you find out if you had a lot of surface area, you, you end up having a base Basically another yard to cut. Yeah. <laughs> it's really what it was. It was like, ah, oh, so you needed more yard, more light, more, and it was kind of like, man. Yeah, more plumbing or whatever. <laughs> another pump to feed it or put it downstream or something like that. Yeah, 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 exactly. I was kind of like, okay, I get the idea here, but after I, after I figured that out for a while, I was kind of like, okay, I'll just create, I like in the one tank that I have now that I have kind of the refugium, um, I do it more f for the fact that it's nice live food for the tangs, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know. Us, you know, like pods can grow down there, and exactly. You got a lot of pods, yeah. If you got a lot of pods. You got to try some of those uh, the dragon pie fish. They, I'm guessing that's what they eat. I mean, it's so they're so cool to watch. I don't know. Exactly. Right. See, I, I put a I put a couple of mandarin in some of those small, beautiful uh, I don't know I call them blood red ish looking ones. They're really tiny, but uh, oh yeah yeah yeah. I, I put two in. I saw them for two days. I couldn't find them. I don't know what the hell happened to them. <laughs> they got lost in the reef. Exactly. I'm like I know they're here somewhere, right? But I. 
But I figured they would show up after two, three days, four days, two weeks, four weeks, and I never found them again. I'm like, okay, well. Uh, that's frustrating. Yeah, 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 exactly, right? Because yeah. you, you never add fish right away, right? You never just, oh, okay, let's start adding things. And it's always one of those, well, it's been forever. Things are going good. Let me just, let me try. Okay, right? Okay. Think it through. Right. <laughs> Sap. <laughs> right yeah okay so back to your tank as far as kind of like um you know the what the future holds right so this tank is this tank is doing good life is good right you yeah. said you said you had played around with kind of like the the salt the sulfur denitrification stuff you said eh, that's that's not for you yeah. right yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm still on the fence. I might go out and get one. I mean, the one that I want to get is, uh, it's pretty hefty. It's like Coraline. Uh, mm -hmm. It's the old school one. Yep. And uh, the model that I would need is like close to 800 bucks. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> or something. yeah. And uh, it's like, well, it's hard to justify spending $800 on something that I know will probably work, but it will require my time to, to tune in and another thing to kind of monitor versus just kind of sticking with it and just maybe just accepting that, hey, my nitrates are always going to be 40. Right. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and plus your tank is working. Why would why would you? Yeah. yeah. But yeah. That's, the, that's the part of the, the whole reef keeping. Um, we're never 100% satisfied. Right. It's just it's right. the nature of the, the addiction or the personality of the person. Um, right. That has a reef. Okay. And then you're always kind of tinkering with things. and. Uh, right now it's been great and I haven't added a whole lot. But like I said last year, I, I did a lot of changes. So this year was more of a, eh, just kind of like let those changes kind of take effect and see what happens. Um, so I don't know, I might I might get the, the sulfur reactor. Mm -hmm. Still on the fence. It's just hard to really justify it. That, and remember, after that sulfur reactor kicks in, after a while you get that rotten egg smell coming out of the effluent because it's sulfur so remember your tank is kind of in that high traffic area so you might yeah. get some of that in there where people go yeah hey what's I, the i don't even like well, yeah and it's bad enough with just a skimmer smell um right and I, I clean that usually twice a week now um but yeah adding sulfur to the mix i don't know right probably not good but if it does happen i'll definitely let you know <laughs> exactly no, no, no major plan, uh, plans for, for lighting changes mm -hmm. either. Uh, as long as these corals are still growing great under these these cheapo T47 lights, I'm, I'm fine with that. Right. Uh, I have seen a lot of tanks. So I've got a lot of friends here that have um, either the Kessels, or the Kessel A, uh, the 360s, the AP700s, or um, the AI Hydras. Um, and those look really cool. I mean, some for some reason the, the color spectrum of those hydras look really neat. Um, the way the corals really fluoresce, it's, it's a different look. Huh? I agree. I, I, I agree. I, I, a thousand percent. It, and I, I don't know why, but they don't. It doesn't come through on video. Meaning. Oh, I, uh, right. Right. The yeah. a, the AI hydras. Personally, when you're there, it pops. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're running either the 26s or the 52s, mm -hmm. and uh, it does. In person, it is just an incredible pop that you see. And um, a lot of my friends that I've sold corals to in the Bay Area run those lights, and they're sending me pictures of the corals that I've sent them, and they're changing even more. It's like right. They're getting more vibrant, so it's like, right. man, right. you, guys are, you guys are doing better than me here. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of cool, I and mean, I want everybody to have success. Um, Hobby. Heck yeah. And okay, so again, you're not going to change lights or anything like that. What about um, as far as adding on any additional tanks or anything like that? Everything's going to stay the same? Um, not right now. I mean, I'm still running the frag tank that's connected. It's only 20 gallons, but it's yep. all plumbed together. Yep. Um, you know, when I retire, hopefully I can retire at age 55, which is uh, like five, five years from now. Next year I'll be 50. Woo! Um, if that happens, then I'll probably do something big for that. Um, just like some, another tank or uh, a bigger frag tank or something. I don't know, because I'll have a lot more free time. So we'll see. That's all he's down the road, though. So, so, so Mike and I, uh, last week, 
we recorded a segment, just a small little segment, because it was the exact same conversation where he's hoping to retire in about eight months. So he's talking about his 500 gallon dream tank, right? Oh and, boy. Right. <laughs> and, and and it's funny because as you do this all your life, your your dream tank tends to change throughout the years. Okay. So in your dream tank, how would it change? Meaning clean slate, right? What would you do totally different? Clean slate? Oh man. Clean slate. Clean slate, blank camp canvas. I would probably go with a glass tank. Um, acrylic is clearer. It seems to be prettier, but uh, you know, it scratches easier. Sure. And uh, I would probably go with the Starfire uh, glass tank all the way, all okay. the way around. Okay. Um, and probably what? Even the same, yeah. <laughs> It's, it's so hard to do that, and it's, uh, it'd be so difficult to pull the trigger on that to, to get a new tank, because you'd have to get a new stand if you want different dimensions, um, and you're looking at upwards of maybe $15,000, so I don't know. But hold it, hold it. Money, money's not the issue. We, we've got a clean yeah. slate. Like, that, that's why for him, 500 gallons was his utopian size, because he had a 1,200 before, right? Yeah, yeah. It, I it, cracked that tank. So he had all the way the big, and he figured 500 was his perfect size, and four yeah. foot deep was his perfect depth. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, I'd have to agree. Yeah, that that depth, that front to back spacing, uh, the visual on something with the tank that deep. Mm -hmm. It's a different perspective. Uh, it's really neat to have that, and to have something like, I would even be happy with, uh, you know, three three feet, you know, 36 inches front to back. Right. Um, so it all depends on. Uh, on the room that it's in. If you're in a dedicated fish room, it's different. But in here, in my house, this tank is like, you walk in the door, you see the tank, and you walk around it every day, you see it. So it, it kind of has to fit the room and the house right um, for me, scale-wise. But yeah, I'd probably right. go wider. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right. Pipes, I've, always liked deep, uh, I've always liked tall tanks, because I, I think they're more majestic. Um, and then uh, it gives a lot of depth from um, the top down, a lot more shadowing. And, and just the fish seem to like it too. I, I've got flame rasses in here, and they haven't jumped. Right. So yeah, and these rasses I've had, I've never had a rat to jump out. I mean, so. And that's saying something, yeah. right? <laughs> because. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe taller tanks are in the depth of the coral, and, and maybe they feel more comfortable with a reef, um, with a, a, a taller rock structure. Right. I don't know. Right. Right. So, yeah. So you'd go with an all glass tank. Okay. Yeah, I'd go with an all glass. And, and uh, uh, what do you think as far as kind of height and depth or uh, what? Dimension wise, probably the same dimension. I, okay. I, the only way I can think of it right now is I'd have to to go in the same spot. Okay. Because um, um, I, I just like the tank being here because I, I spend a lot of time in this room. I watch TV out here. It's central to the kitchen. So sure. everything's like it happens all around here. Sure. So I would probably go the same. Uh, eight feet long, mm -hmm. uh, 36 inches wide, or deep front to back, yep. and probably 30 inches tall. Uh, boy, that'd be a beast. <laughs> <That'd> be nice. <laughs> uh, Imagine the weight. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. We're on cement floor. I mean, we're on a concrete right. slab here. Right. So that shouldn't be a problem, but I'd have, probably have to have an engineer look at it. Uh, <laughs> crack my foundation. Uh, and, and okay, so. As far as kind of the, we'll say the filtration, would you still keep it where you have it? Would you move it in a different location? Because like Mike, for example, he would move his out from underneath because he's tired of bending over. He said like as age progresses, he's like, he's tired of all that sort of stuff, right? So he, he would move it out, right? And and like even like his overflows, he's saying maybe a coast to coast on the side, right? So yeah. you can easily access it. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm having, I have now, coast to coast on the side, uh, on one end of the tank. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Um, Mike's a smart guy. He's been in this hobby a lot longer <laughs> than I have. And uh, I guess waist-high equipment would be great, right? Having all your equipment on a, on a waist-high stand where uh, you're not contorting yourself to change your reactor <laughs> to pull out something from your son. Uh, yeah. That's a good idea. All right. Yeah, think about that, yeah. Uh, I don't know where it would all go. That's the thing. Right. I have to figure it all out to make it. Or who cares? You know what? So what? 
know, my kids are going to be out. <laughs> well, that, be grown up. Exactly. <laughs> kids are going to be grow up. You're retired. One of the rooms. <laughs> it's my. It's your new filtration room. <laughs> Go hog wild. <laughs> I don't want the humidity though, man. Right now it's like it's just right. Uh, I mean, right. Uh, I'm gonna get another, you know, say another hundred gallons of water or uh, hundred fifty gallons of water would make it too humid. I, uh, right. It's got to be that balancing act. Right, right. Because again, when you add that much volume, it's evaporating no matter what you do, right? Yeah. You know what's a scary thought though, Russ? I've been thinking about this lately, lately and um, you know, my tank basically evaporates about 30 gallons of water a month. Mm -hmm. Or not, sorry, a month, a week. Sure. Right? I've got this pen that I fill up with RODI water every 30, uh, and it's 32 gallons, and you know, it'll get down to the bottom every every like seven to eight days, and I'm like. That's a lot of water, and it's just going in my house. So. Where's it at? Right. <laughs> my wall. It's like, what are the long term effects of this? Right. <laughs> I got wood rot in my framing now. <laughs> All right. Uh, the things that we do, the things that we're doing for this, these tanks. It, it's so funny because I think the exact same thing, because especially the one tank of mine is in my bedroom. <laughs> uh -huh. And I'm thinking at night, you know. <laughs> I'm in there thinking, man, I know that I'm getting at least a good eight hours of this evaporated water <laughs> into our lungs. I'm like, you would think, I, you know, especially in the wintertime up in Pennsylvania, where you have the furnace, <laughs> you know, just making sure. Yeah, and, and you see, like, you know, I've gotten some of our return vents uh, on our ceiling. There's some rust on there. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, <no>, man. <laughs> Yep. Oh gosh. Yep, yep, yep. Ex exactly. Like to, am I slowly destroying my house from the inside out? Right. Because of a damn hurry. I'm telling you too. Okay, so so for your dream tank, it doesn't seem like you're dreaming too big. Meaning. No. You're, and, and yeah, I, this was, this, yeah. This was kind of my. This was my pretty much my last raw tank. Right. So, uh, right. And I went through and I was like, remember back in the day, it was either this or a new car. Right. So I ended up keeping this, so I didn't get the new car. Right. Um, so this this has been it for, and my wife said, it's also my casket too. So <laughs> like, that's the way it all fit in this thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of awesome when you think yeah, about it. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's <an> acrylic box. <laughs> so, so, so the day that you go, she's gonna, she's gonna shut the fire down. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, all your heart. French are empty. Drain it out. Stick me in there. That's right. And then she's gonna put. Five grand for casket, huh? Yeah, they just put me in this box. <laughs> That's right. I'm in the ground. No one's gonna care. That's right. <laughs> Uh, and, then, and then she's gonna take all those fish and make them corpses as well. <laughs> she, that, yeah, uh, that Achilles. You know, that, <laughs> yeah, it's funny. My kids have. Uh, my youngest daughter, for some reason, she's a uh, a really big animal lover, and she's t she just turned thirteen this year, and she's really taken an interest in uh, in the fish and taking care of things and kind of helping out. Uh, I got a little koi pond out back too, so she kind of has been helping out with that, and it's. It's neat to see the kids, at least one of them, finally kind of help right. out and show an interest in the tank. Um, right. The other right. two, and the other two couldn't really care. Right. But I guess I got one. Maybe maybe she'll kind of carry the torch for me. <laughs> Good luck. Because yeah. out of three, mine are like, oh, that's cool. I got to go. <laughs> yeah, over three. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Also, you know what? If I could just keep her, if I could spark that interest with her and, and kind of show her the ropes and explain things. Um, you never know, man. All the taste yeah. is a seed. Right. You know, so it's and, the seed. and does she um, does she take care of them today as far as kind of like the feeding side of it or any of that kind of She'll stuff? help out a little bit with that. Um, right now her interest is more in the koi fish. Because mm -hmm. uh, I've kind of given up. I've kind of lost interest in the koi fish. And uh, she's really taking an interest to kind of keep the water out there um, clean and filtration rate. So, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully... And, and It'll translate to this too. And so, when she's taking care of the whole koi pond, everything. Yeah, yeah, she feeds them. I stopped feeding them. I'm like, well, if you, you know, if you really want these fish, you can keep them because I was going to put them on Craigslist to have some. Right. And get them. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. How long's it been lasting? What's that? How long's it been lasting as far as you're taking care of? Um, so far it's been about about eight months. Huh. 
Okay, so then it's good, right? Because anything after like what a month, it's good. Period, uh, right? Yeah, she's out there. She goes out there and feeds them, and uh, she's 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 really proud because the fish come up to her. She goes, right. "Hey, Dad, look, these fish come up to me and eat out of my hand, and they wouldn't do that for me. These right. fish, the yeah. ones that uh, that are in there now, were really skittish of me. I don't know why. You know, I freaking raised you guys, <laughs> but uh, they would never eat out of my hand. This last group." Right. And you know, she's got okay. something to eat out of her hand, which is really, you know, I think it's pretty special. That is. <laughs> So to your point, after eight months, there, there's, you know, again, there's something blossoming there, so it, it may even exactly. translate into that a little bit. Exactly. It could possibly turn into her taking an interest in biology or something. Right. Or just coral reefs in general and kind of, kind of seeing where that goes. Um, right. I, I never know. I never know. I don't think she realizes, um, you know, how hard these tanks are to take care of, um, you know, in the time requirement. And uh, it's it's not just it looks pretty all the time. I mean, there's times where it looks like crap. Right. <laughs> you know, it's just it's hard to, to get the algae off the walls where I get lazy. I go out of town and I come home and I got to scrape for like 45 minutes uh, coraline algae. Ugh, coraline algae. You know, people like it. I can't stand it. <laughs> I was gonna say, and remember when we first started, we were praying for coraline algae. Like when you first started in the hobby, right? You were like, what's this? What's that purple stuff? Right? Why, why is it on my rocks? I wanted it to grow on my rocks, right? <laughs> And, and then, you, then, and then it was, you know, the experienced guys in their heart. Well, that's coral and algae. That's the good stuff. And you'll know when you start growing coral and algae that your tank is starting to again mature and things are going good. And then you're like, oh, okay, I want some of that stuff, right? And then <laughs> after a year, you're like, okay, how do I get rid of some of this stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. How do I stop growing this stuff, right? Yeah. Mm. Oh, they, they, you know, for so, if this tank, if I don't scrape the uh, the tank wall, um, I'll get specks of it coming in every four days. Oh yeah. It's just, it's it's everything's balanced out. Everything's growing. So yeah. I, I feel like I'm complaining, <laughs> which I shouldn't be, but it's just part of the uh, the ball and chain. Yes, so very much so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that bubble, right? When, thing, yeah. when things are going good, yeah, they're going good, but everything's growing, right? Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this year, again, I don't know what happened, but 2017, it, it could have been the result of uh, a lot of the changes that I did last year, 2016, and everything kind of kicking in and, and kind of going on autopilot there. Still don't have a pH monitor, so I don't have no idea what the pH is. I still don't have a, a fancy uh, Apex controller or anything, so uh, the only technology that I have is uh, a Ranko controller, a <laughs> dual stage controller for the temperature of the heaters, <laughs> and um, uh, calcium reactor CO2 regulator. Right. The aquarium plants one. <laughs> That's about, about as complex as I get around here. <laughs> Which I think is awesome. I still say it's the best way to go because everybody still, you know, especially nowadays it, because everybody relies on that technology and then again, the technology fails and then next thing you know, you have catastrophes, right? Constant. Yeah. Right? Now you get a tank, a tank restart or something like that. Right. It's some controller freaking out. But. Right. Yeah, in but you know we're in this day and age of technology though, so everything I, I should be embracing it more. But you know I do enough of it at work. I, and I don't want to have to do anything here. I don't want to have to worry about downloading or flashing a firmware or programming. You know programming, even though it's probably simple code. I don't want to do that. Well, that I think that's the funny part. Where right? we both do it for our day jobs. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's like the last thing I want is technology. Right. And it goes to show you, though, that you can have beautiful, successful, gorgeous tanks, and you don't need technology to do the, it. Right? Oh, man. You're not kidding. Um, the, the most technology or the tech work that I have to do with these things is setting uh, my timers for time drifts. I mean, you know, these digital timers are not the greatest, and they drift off over a period of months. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and 
you know, the, the thing about it though. Okay, hold on, let's stop. So with that in mind, what is the worst kind of, um, we'll say, issue that you've had on your tank this year in 2017, right? Um, that maybe could have been prevented with technology. Oh, gosh. In other I words, no. I really, you know, that's a good question. Um, I don't think technology would have helped a calcium wrapper um, that needs to be cleaned. Right. I really don't. I mean, it's not going it, to, it'll tell you your flow rates are down, but, you know, getting in there and cleaning is one thing. Right. Um, right. All right, that's that's just plain old, you know, you have to spend time looking and cleaning and doing, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to think, was there any issues that I had that technology could have saved? Gosh, I don't think so. I mean, it's, it's this is about as low tech as you can get. Right, like when, you're, when your pumps went on your tank, right, technology right. wouldn't have helped you there, right? Right. I think that could have alarmed me or something, but I, I see the tank every day or, you know, someone sees it every day. And, right. Um, I tell when the flow is off. And, right. Right. Yeah, I think just manual routine maintenance, you know, um, I do notice that those J-Bow power heads, um, they seem to run optimally if you can clean them out, you know, at least the impeller yeah. and, you know, clean that impeller and the impeller well out every, like, two months. Um, that's about it. And I think most, I think most of the, even like the Tunzies or, I mean, it, it really, I don't think it really matters. Any of the kind of, um, you know, the circulating pumps that you put in salt water, you know, I yeah. think, I think every two to three months, you know, you have to give them that acid bath, vinegar bath, whatever you want to call it. Uh, yeah. Just to break up that film that builds up on them. Yeah. Or like yeah, that. yeah, because I know, like, I know, especially with the Tunzi guys, because again, I, I'm more familiar with their products. I mean, they try to use like the best titanium rods that are out there and things of that nature, and it's you know, calcification occurs. So you you need yeah. to you know, when, you know, when you're dumping ten pounds of calcium and and it's getting broke down, you know. You gotta, yeah, it seems to precipitate and build up on those spinning parts with a little bit of heat there too. Um, right. Yeah. Exactly. And, and those test yeah. man, you don't want them to lock up, man, because you gotta, you gotta send them all the way back in. That's a Roger there in Texas. You know, <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> So in general terms, see, you look at it and you say, so from a technology end of it, the fact that you don't have the technology on your tank, it's not hampering you in any way, shape, or form, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, a lot of people that come over, that's the first thing they ask. It's like, right. well, where's your controller? Right. Uh, where's your, what's your pH? Or where's your controller? And uh, they're really shocked because a lot of people are just getting into the hobby now and they're buying frags. Right. And, uh, you know, they're getting into the hobby right now with all the technology, so they think that they have to have it. Right. And when I show them the tank and I show them, hey, this is a digital timer, here's my Ranko controller. Right. <laughs> uh, I know what the pH is. You can tell me when you test it when you get home. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it, it blows their mind, you know. And right. I, I don't really like probes and having a probe kind of control things. Um, it's just a little too scary for me. For sure. Because probes are, they, they, they go bad sometimes. Well, that's just it. They they go bad constantly, right? Because you always have to calibrate. Right. Constantly, right? Because they're floating. Right. Yeah. I remember um, the the one, I, and I forget the lab that she worked in, but um, she did a lot of work with uh, the whole coral kind of. Um, Basically, it was the whole ocean acidification, and they had various kind of uh, lab work that was done where they had scientific grade probes that, again, they were they were testing for coral growth and the effects of ocean ocean acidification, and so they had to again make sure that the yeah, probes lab were, grade. exactly yeah. and, calibrate those every like twelve hours. Yes. Okay. Exactly, and and the probes cost freaking ten thousand bucks, right? And I'm like, hold it, a ten thousand dollar probe, and you got to calibrate it every twelve hours. What? Why would you even go that route, right? And, 
Yeah. Okay, so hold it. Along those lines, with uh, with your calcium reactor then, right, how do you tune it in? In other words, for those new viewers out there, right? Sure. To, you know, again, if you've got a calcium reactor, the idea of a calcium reactor is to throw enough CO2 in there to melt the media, right, to a point where ultimately it's going to take and melt the media enough to throw, again, the, the calcium enough to basically bring it up. But and it's also going to throw alkalinity into your tank, right? And then in turn, you know, it's going to basically take and adjust your, ultimately adjust your pH either up or down for, you know, making it more acidic or not. So how are you, how are you making sure that you're not crushing, you know, your tank, you know, we'll say pH one way or the other? Yeah. Well, first of all, I don't know what the pH is. So right. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, I just test my alk. I test my alkalinity in this tank every like every two weeks. I know I should change. I know I should test it more. I know I should test it every one week, but it doesn't drift. I've got mm -hmm. my alk running at like nine mm -hmm. right now, and so I keep my bubble rate the same. Now I do notice that I did have to increase my bubble rate this year a little bit because of the consumption. Mm -hmm. I mean, the corals are growing. You know, we're talking they're consuming a lot more media, so. Um, you've got to get your alkalinity up in the tank. So I'll increase just the bubble rate and I'll retest it in like a week and it stays right where I want it. So. Okay, and so, so again, if I'm a new hobbyist and I'm thinking I'm going to add a calcium reactor to my tank, right? You have to dial a calcium reactor in, right? And so going through that period of dialing it in, you're going to measure that alkalinity, all right? More than once every two weeks, but you're going to measure that more frequently to keep it at Right, that nine. Pick your number, pick your right. number, and target your number. Um, right. Kind of stay within, stay within that number within one dkh if you can. Um, you'll you'll notice that, and I always test the same time of day too. It's like uh, when I do test, and I have this Excel spreadsheet that has everything that I've tested. Now I've got charts that plot my alk, and it has been so stable. It's like almost like a straight line now, um, versus my nitrates that have kind of skewed up mm -hmm. and, and gone down. down. Um, so just pick that number and do your best to, to target and stay at it. Uh, as you're dialing in your reactor, heck, test that thing every two days. Um, you know, you're you're going to have to burn through test kits, but it's worth it in the long run. And the think of it also is that if you think, oh, everything's looking really good, and you go out and buy a ton of frags, that's going to change it. You know, As those corals start consuming it, your alk's going to drop. So it's uh, you got to be aware that as you add stuff, as you add more corals, your consumption rate, your alkalinity will drop as things grow. Even coraling algae, from what I understand, coraling algae, as it grows, it consumes alkalinity also. So. Right, exactly. <laughs> So, so again, so as a new hobbyist, if new hobbyists are watching it, you're wondering how you can do that. Again, what you're doing is you're just monitoring your alkalinity, and as long as your alkalinity is in line, then basically at that point in time, everything will balance out. Right. Yeah. So that's at what. At least not me, man. No, no, no. I, mean, I know a lot of people swear by pH. I mean, a lot of people swear by pH and having the pH in the reactor running at 6.4 or something like that. And uh, and then you know if it gets above that, then it shuts off the reactor, or it um, does something where you know the regulator shuts down and the pH goes down, or something like that. And it's it's almost like there's too many variables there with a bad probe, um, a faulty you know a faulty monitor, or something like that. And, it, and heck, I know some regulators don't like to be turned on and off. I mean those old copper ones. Right. That <laughs> don't even use that stuff. <laughs> Those don't like to be shut off and on a lot of the times because they stick. Right. And uh, it's just not worth it. I'd rather have my alkalinity just be stable all the time instead of having to chase a pH number that controls my alkalinity. Um, I pick my number, I target my number, and um, every once in a while I might have to add in a couple teaspoons of buffer. You know, maybe like two teaspoons of buffer if it gets to 8.5. So I'll add in two teaspoons of buffer. And adjust the CO2 rate also. Make, make more bubbles. Sure. And that's what it does to bring it up a little bit. And then retest it in three to five days with gross spurts. Sure. Uh, yeah, and and again, you go back to, I go back to the new hobbyist if, if they're watching it. 
I always tell them, follow the recipe of one particular person and don't pick and choose from everybody. All right? Because when you follow that one recipe, it usually works because there are things that you do in one aspect that maybe other things that you do kind of compensate for it, right? And, and and then when you you maybe pick something that you do that somebody else on Reef Central does something else differently in another area and then they do something else. When you mix all of those ingredients together, it kind of might be an ingredient, you know, bouillabaisse for failure, right? Yeah. <laughs> As opposed to, again, again, just picking what somebody does and follow it. So if you like what Tim does, follow what Tim does completely, right? As opposed yeah, right. to... Yeah, I mean, there's so much data, you know, with the internet, there's so much data out there, it's it's, it's like data overload. It doesn't matter what area of life you're in. If it's reef tanks, there's so much data and new studies out there now and different ways of doing things. There's so many choices and options, which, which is great. Um, try and find one that works for you, you know? Right, right, exactly. It's no, longer, it's no longer cookie cutter, old school technology. This is, everyone's got a different method. It seems like there's a new technique or a, do, a new method of reef keeping that comes online every year now it's like man how much of this is marketing i don't know <laughs> it's like man, there's something new every year it's like oh this is like this new technique for for reef keeping it's like well the principles are really the same I mean, right good water quality good water quality flow and lights <laughs> Pe period it hasn't changed <laughs> at least that's what seems to work for me well, and it works for everybody. Those are the three, right? It doesn't change, right? Yeah. Good water flow, good water flow, good water quality and lights, right? How you achieve that ultimately? Yeah. People do that in different ways, right? So many ways to skin a cat. Which yes. Is, which is great. I think that's awesome. Right now, it's, it's probably no better time to get into reef keeping than right now with all the technology out there. But at the same time. There's so much information to sit through, and so many choices and different um, techniques to, to raise corals and fish. Exactly, and that that's why I like doing like these videos. Say, for example, with you, where okay, so we we talk year after year after year, right? And so we show the progression, and and we have different perspectives of what you've done throughout the years, right? And and again, so when there's a new hobbyist, for example, that he starts, you know, January of you know again 2018, and and he watches your first video from three years ago and he watches your second video and your third video and he sees what you've added and by the time he watches your third video he goes hey I'm going to take now and start my tank with this bashy kind of bio media reactor, right? And then with these lights, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to add the no pox, and I'm going to, this is the recipe, right? Because it worked for Tim, right? Yeah. You know? And oh, by the way, I'm going to use his corals because it works for him, and I'm going to reach out to him on Facebook, right? Because that works, right? Yeah. It, it yeah, my corals are pretty damn resilient. <laughs> right. You can get all the stuff that I've got and they kind of screwed up on. And, um, you know, it's, I consider everything in my tank tank raised. And uh, everybody, you know, I have people that come over just out of the blue. Uh, they'll text me and I'm like, hey, I'll just drop on by and take a look. And you, you can see it. Right. Right. Okay. So from a closing kind of segment, right? Again, we know we, we don't have much as far as what you're going to do this year, as far as plans on sulfur or anything like that, no fish or anything like that you're going to add, right? Right. Um, yeah. I have no more room to add fish. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a myriad of tanks in here, and they're all old and um, being nice to each other for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what else I can do, honestly. I, I think I've kind of hit the wall here where... Um, maybe the next tinkering thing is going to be the sulfur reactor. Um, that's the only thing that's possibly on my mind for next year, for, for 2018. Um, other than that, just growing stuff out. You know, and it just, sure. I, I'm really at that age, uh, I'm, at, I'm at that age and experience now where I just want to share this with people. I want people to come over and take a look and, and just to kind of be, um, you know, impressed and, and wowed and, and kind of like stimulated and encouraged if anything you know right come on over take a look at it and, and just and, and, you know hopefully i can inspire you to, to keep it going um, if you're starting off to 
uh, keep going even though if you stumble and fall. Right, right, exactly. Well, you know, I guess the interesting piece there will be the fact that, you know, through these videos, it'll be interesting to see how many people you've encouraged just not only locally, but through the power of the internet and the videos, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's kind of cool. You know, with ReCentral, I've got friends that, um, that are over in Europe, too. That right. It's, it's just neat that, you know, there's people in Canada and all throughout Europe and a, a gentleman in Taiwan also. It's right. Just, it's very neat to kind of connect with people. And we all kind of see each other's struggles and uh, pitfalls and ups and downs and, and, you know, moments of glory and moments of failure. Right. It's, just when you think you're on top of things, though, man, you'll get humbled. <laughs> I don't know why. It always happens. <laughs> so. And that, that's why we're knocking on wood as we speak, right? You know? Exactly. Again, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we won't jinx it, right? It's going to be a great 2018. Let's hope for the best for everybody out there with, uh, with tanks and, and, and reefs, reefs and people that are you know kind of on the fence about staying in um, just want to encourage you to, to keep it going if it's in your heart to keep it going uh, for the new people that are you know starting out and frustrated that their stuff isn't growing and uh, you know they're losing corals left and right you know, keep at it and just kind of get your water tested and give it time you know, these, these tanks it's not an overnight fix these things take time to develop a lot of time to, to kind of balance themselves out biologically. Right, and to your point, you're you're like with this build six, seven years into it, right? And and now it's kind of like you're starting to feel and see the the fruits of your labor, so to speak, as far as it, it being, you know, that masterpiece in autopilot, so to me. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Well, good deal, sir. So to that point, uh, again, I always appreciate the time. You're welcome, Russ. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll talk to you soon. Sounds sure. good, buddy.